Rallying's Group B supercars, the Plastic Fantastics, were banned from the World Championship, too fast and too dangerous. But they fitted well into Paris Dakar's prototypes, and thus the Peugeot factory team made its debut with the 205 T16. Their arrival marked a new era in the nature of Paris Dakar. Now in its ninth year, the event originally conceived by Thierry Sabine as being a test for privateer drivers, with some room left over on the entry list for professionals as well, had made a complete about face. What was happening now was that the event was being taken over by professional teams with some space left over for privateers, although they had little chance of victory. The Mitsubishi team had started the ball rolling and the full works participation of Rothmann's Porsche had so far been the epitome of Paris-Dakar professionalism. Now, the massive Peugeot factory effort, which had been used to conquer the rally world, was set to come raiding. While Cyril Neveu led the bike section, others were less lucky. Gaston Raye was back, of course, on the Marlborough BMW, and was experiencing his usual run of early bad luck. Italian rally driver Zanussi, the 205 pilot in a hurry here, and no wonder the 205s have been consistently faster than anyone or anything else since the prologue on French soil. By now, Raye was gathering his forces, and as the rally headed towards the halfway point at Agadez, he was third and consistently fastest. But, heading towards Timbuktu, Hubert Oriol, now riding for Kajiva, was fractionally ahead of Honda's Cyril Neveu. From Timbuktu, the rally is two-thirds over, and it's all downhill from here, figuratively speaking at least. Paris Dakar newcomer Patrick Tombe, another fugitive from circuit racing, had scored several stage victories and was slowly climbing the leaderboard. Mitsubishi weren't having a great deal of luck, Shinazuka seemed to be their best hope. The iron ore trains, sometimes four kilometres long, are the most impressive landmark of the desert plains in Mauritania. Ari Vatanen was the second most impressive. Despite a few moments of excitement, he was the quickest of the very quick Peugeot and holding a commanding lead. Zaniroli and the Range Rover were clinging on in second place. Shinazuka was still Mitsubishi's best bet, and he was getting faster as the event went on. Leading the trucks, Van der Roy and the twin-engine DAF Special, specifically built for Paris Dakar. In the background, top left, the sea, and that means the end of the ninth Paris Dakar. Ari Vatanen scored a convincing win by more than an hour from Zaniroli, and Shinazuka had indeed been the best of the Pajero drivers, recording a strong finish in third place. On two wheels, the win had gone to Cyril Neveu on his Honda, his fifth Paris Dakar victory. Eddie Aurelli was second on another Honda, and double winner Gaston Raye took third place. But if you're looking for a really convincing win, Try this for size. Van der Roy, unlucky last year with the new truck supposed to redress the defeat of 1985, was a whole day ahead of his nearest rival at the finish line in Dakar. <laughs>